Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Hadi from North Telecom. Hadi, thank you very much for joining us. We've spoken many times before. When we spoke before, the satellite industry was going through a great deal of evolution and change and there were challenges ahead. What's your perception of what's happening at the moment? Yeah, actually, uh, this is a great question. Uh, as I've told you before, we as a service provider, you know, we see a lot of uh, challenge and opportunity at the same time. But the most unforced challenge in the market is supply and demand issues currently, you know. Uh, we have just huge supply and demand is shrinking day by day, week, weekly, monthly, you know. And uh, that's a great challenge. We, I think to overcome uh, for this challenge, on this challenge, we need to uh, enter to kind of blue ocean strategy. We have to get or to set the strategy, you know, uh, to do the demand creation. Actually, blue ocean strategy is nothing than demand creation. So how we can uh, create the uh, demand or basically how we can set the uh, blue ocean strategy, uh, I think uh, there are few factors, few pillars. Uh, we all need to work hand in hand in the uh, uh, supply chain, you know, to make this happen. Uh, one of the most enforced pillar uh, for creating the blue ocean strategy would be uh, marketing strategy. I believe we have to do or we have to set uh, a new marketing strategy uh, in inside the satellite market. Uh, maybe I can elaborate a little bit more. You know, uh, the most enforced marketing strategy should be. Uh, we need to go to different market. We need to segment this market. We need to understand the customer needs. Uh, what are the customer needs? What are the market needs? Uh, we need to basically uh, bring the service up based on the customer requirement, based on the market requirement, based on the market segments. Uh, and we, we need, to, at the end of the day, we need to go after customer excellency, customer support, uh, and consequently, you know, we can we can succeed uh, on those market and those uh, basically market segments. The second pillar of uh, the blue ocean strategy would be simply, you know, uh, restructuring the supply chain. I was talking at Casba. I bring this up. I think look at that on supply chain uh, in satellite industry. It is really very sick and very weak at this moment, you know, because every industry look at on the supply chain from production all the way to service delivery. You know, there is there is a very proper chain, well defined uh, job and responsibility of each uh, basically, you know, uh, chain is very, very clear, very obvious, you know. Uh, but I think we don't. We are missing this in the industry. We have to. Uh, we have to rely on service providers, system integrators, satellite operators, satellite manufacturer, launchers. You know, but as you can see, uh, often in satellite industry, for for instance, satellite operators are doing the job of service providers, and actually, that is ending to instead of demand creation, that is ending to. Uh, killing the demand in the market because if you don't have the culture, if you don't have the uh, customer excellency uh, culture and orientation within the organization, uh, you will not be able to simply deliver the service. So I strongly believe one of the ways uh, for overcoming this supply and demand issue or better to say to, to create a blue ocean strategy or blue ocean basically would be uh, look at on the supply chain and restructuring the supply chain. The third pillar of that, you know, which is very well connected to number one and the numbers the second, uh, would be the human resource, uh, basically bringing new human resource, not just from the satellite market, but also from the other markets. Because how you want to meet the customer requirement, how you want to meet the market requirement or market segment requirement, if you don't know what are the challenges and what are the opportunities from those market segments. So 
I think if we, will, we would be able to get these three measures uh, in place within the satra industry, uh, we would be able to overcome the supply and demand issues, you know, a few years down the road. Now you're a service provider, so this affects you more than anybody. Why has the satellite industry become so complacent and not done something about this sooner? Again, uh, I think I have to go back to uh, supply and demand issue. I mean, I really see the big issue in the industry itself is the supply and demand. And I'm not actually blaming the suppliers, i.e. satellite operators, for bringing more capacity. I think more capacity meaning that more opportunities, but uh, my question always for satellite operators are, is, I mean, what are the markets, what are the uh, segments uh, we can use and we can leverage the capacity? I mean, bringing capacity itself is not just, uh, you know, uh, competitive advantage itself. We have to look at on the segments, we have to look at on the customer needs and we need to create the service simply, you know, for requirements of those market segments, those customers, basically. Uh, we see a lot of challenges. The most enforced challenges is customer excellency. I've, I've said that many, many times in different events, interviewing with different magazines, even in the past I have mentioned with you, you know, we have uh, to ensure we are delivering the service and we are basically going through the customer excellency. How this can be possible, you need companies like service providers, like North Telecom or others, you know, uh, like a Speedcast, for example, in the market, uh, to having this customer excellency culture in place and ensuring they are delivering the service together with the customer excellency. So the most enforced cha challenge in the market, in not just in the satellite market, I'm talking about the other market, or basically other market segments, uh, would be the customer excellency and the uh, uh, service delivery. That would be the most enforced challenge. Now there's a lot of disruptive technologies coming into the market and we've got the uh, influx of new LEO Constellation. Is, is that going to add anything into the value chain immediately or in, in, you know, in the foreseeable future? Uh, it is very interesting uh, subject. Thanks for bringing this up. Uh, Leo constellation or Mio or you know any disruptive uh, technology basically, uh, it is just adding and adding satellite capacity in the market. The, the question, I mean, I, I, I mean, in contrary, I have a question for you. I mean, do we re really need more capacity in the market? I mean, that would be the question. I don't really see that because uh, we do have enough capacity in the market right now. Uh, even we do have oversupply capacity. Uh, the technology itself is great technology. It could be a very long-term opportunity, but it is always depend on how we go after demand creation. Can we create demand? Can we go to new markets? Can we uh, understand what are the requirements on the other markets, other market segments. If we can identify those requirements, if we can identify those opportunities, then definitely Leo, Mio, any other new technologies in, in the future would be very, very interesting, would be a big opportunities uh, for the satellite markets and consequently for the other markets. For North Telecom though, with these conditions in place, what sectors are you particularly looking at then to drive your business forward? Interesting question as well. Uh, I think everyone knows steel, oil and gas and maritime sector remains one of a very, very, big, uh, very big interesting market, you know, which uh, I think there is a huge uh, opportunities uh, in those market, on those market, you know. So, North Telecom will remain focused to work on those market segments while I, I have said many times in the past I think we are one of a very few satellite service providers uh, which we are very much diversified in the market. We are working on different verticals. Uh, broadcasting is one of our big basically uh, portion of business. Uh, we are also working on the managed service. 
uh, for different verticals. We are also providing service to telecos. Uh, we have a very good partner down in Middle East, uh, you know. And again, we remain uh, focused, you know, on these two verticals because we believe those those verticals are the verticals which uh, we can we can generate more and more business, or basically more revenue, profit from that. Adi, thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you.